It's Michelle and it's Friday and welcome to my first Tea and Me. Uh, tea and Me is a time when I make myself a cup of tea and I hang with you like you were visiting with me and I share some things that are going on that I think might interest you. So today um, what I would like to have my video be about is one, I want to show you a little bit about my new remodeled renovated nest I call it which is my indoor work station two I'd like to show you some happy mail that I got um, in the post today I'm very excited to open it third I went to my very first estate sale this morning I have a lot to say about that because it was off the charts and I have some really interesting things to show you and get your take on um, and then finally I'd like to cover the materials needed for my next tutorial. That way, if you want to uh, work along with me when I do it, you can have the things um, on your work table as well, and you can play along with me. So first, let's start with my tea. My tea of today is my new favorite tea called Stash, and it's a chai spice. And I'm definitely not the kind of gal that usually puts um, milk and sugar in my tea. I know, I just drink it the way it is, right out of the bag. But I feel like with chai, I have to, and I can't have dairy, so it's actually soy. But look at this beautiful china, well, beautiful um, cup my son got me in London with a blue tit on it. I wish we had them here. I don't think we have them in North America. Maybe we do, but we don't have them in New England. So that is my tea today. yummy um, I'm gonna actually put it aside and the first thing I'm gonna do is go over my happy meal mail mail I keep saying happy meal like I'm hungry or something I don't know so first let me tell you a little about this so Darlene's creative studio uh, is she's from Canada and I actually won a contest from her when she did her 30-day um, little journal challenge which to me was like so generous. I can't believe, number one, that she made that many journals in a month, and number two, that she gave all of them away. She is so generous. And I won one of those journals, and I, when it came in, I was just blown away by the quality of her work. And she just gave away her lap book. I know, I know, that alone, I mean, I know how much lap books, how much it take. And I felt a little guilty entering the contest, but I just, first of all, I love lap books. And second of all, her work is so precise. And I love owning people's work that are so different from my own because I am not precise. I am not um, somebody who can do, you know, everything straight and perfect. And Darlene is like a master at it. And how she does things so fast is beyond me. But you need to check out her site. I'm going to um, post her Etsy shop link and her um, YouTube channel below because she does beautiful work and her work is put together so well. It feels so good in the hand that, um, and her prices are amazing. Like, I don't even know how she, she's like giving it away, but she's so fair. And if you want to get a gift, especially for Mother's Day, I would say, um, I don't know if you'd get it in time, um, because it's Canadian Post, but I would definitely encourage you to go to her shop because everything she makes is adorable. So I ended up winning the lap book contest she had, and I'll admit I feel very guilty because this is the second contest of hers I've won. I am not going to um, put my name in any more of her contests, no matter what, because I just don't think that's fair. But I couldn't help myself. Look at this tape. I'll put that aside. So anyway, um, there's a little envelope here. Look at this little tag, how beautiful. She does just beautiful work. She really does. And she, I actually think I saw this, I did, I saw this um, tutorial where she did these cards and she just takes game cards from different games and uh, she covers them. And you can see it a little bit in through there, but that's part of the charm that you can tell that it's a, a recycled item. So that's pretty cute always cute so here it is and I'm gonna carefully open it 
And I'm going to actually tear this off just a little bit because I want you guys to see her logo. Darlene's Creative Studio. That's where you can email her at. Oh, gosh, Darlene. This is beautiful. Now, I'm not going to go through it really slowly because she has a flip through of this on her channel, and I want you to go to her channel. But I just have to look at it really quick before I get move on because I am just, ah, she has this little buckle. Wow, that is really really pretty and this is what I thought was just gorgeous these glassine um, pockets oh, she has a few little how sweet she has some things oh gosh so she has tags and flips I don't know if you can see this oh and you know it just like the other it's so well made like seriously perfect perfect it's just perfection oh Darlene I love it I am probably going to take this with me on my trip to England um, just lovely look at this with the bright pink oh oh my gosh it's, it's even more beautiful in person than it was on her video. And I feel so honored to be able to own this book. And like I said, I don't want to show too much of it because honestly, her flip through is lovely and I want you to watch her flip through. So I'm going to actually shut this, not because I don't want to show you every nook and cranny, but because I want her to. Thank you, Darlene. You are so generous. I adore it. I will cherish it. Um, it is just phenomenally beautiful. And I promise I won't enter any more of your contests. Okay, so I'm going to put this aside. And again, go to the bottom of my, um, uh, in my video so that you can get Darlene's links because you will not be sorry. Her work is phenomenal. Okay, so... Number two, let's do a little tour of my nest. Yay! Hi, guys. Um, you might have seen on Instagram that I made a little, what I'm calling, nest on my second floor landing. And I just thought I'd give you a really quick little peek through on it. This is the piece that I refinished. Pretty cool with the marble top. Pretty progressive for the 70s. And it gives me a nice, gosh, I think it's a six foot work table. I'm looking outside my palladium window, which is on the second floor, which is a nice view. As you can see, that's my downstairs. And then I have a little bookcase and I have this all set up with all the things that I use all the time, punches and ephemera and things that I'm always reaching for. And not to make, I don't want to make you dizzy. And then there's the little desk that I bought on Marketplace as well with my type tray. Let me show you inside how cute it is. Oops, take that. We don't need to see that. Isn't that cute? It's got like a leather. It's a little buckled because of the age, but I just put a piece of glass on here anyway when I work. It has two generous drawers down there. I have my new server. I have my, my bookcase. And then right down here, I have my bookcase with all of the books that I use for fussy cutting and book pages. And basically, that is my nest. And just so you know, I am nestled between my two boys' rooms right there, the bathroom right there, my bedroom right there, and the stairs going down. So when I call it my nest, it really is just a little tiny nest perched high, and uh, I think it's going to work out great. 
Thanks for taking a look. I appreciate it. Hi, guys. Um, you might have seen on Instagram that I made a little, what I'm calling, nest on my second floor landing. And I just thought I'd give you a really quick little peek through on it. This is the piece that I refinished. Pretty cool with the marble top. Pretty progressive for the 70s. And it gives me a nice, gosh, I think it's a six foot work table. I'm looking outside my palladium window, which is on the second floor, which is a nice view. As you can see, that's my downstairs. And then I have a little bookcase and I have this all set up with all the things that I use all the time, punches and ephemera and things that I'm always reaching for. And not to make, I don't want to make you dizzy. And then there's the little desk that I bought on Marketplace as well with my type tray. Let me show you inside how cute it is. Oops, take that. We don't need to see that. Isn't that cute? It's got like a leather. It's a little buckled because of the age, but I just put a piece of glass on here anyway when I work. It has two generous drawers down there. I have my new server. I have my, my bookcase. And then right down here, I have my bookcase with all of the books that I use for fussy cutting and book pages. And basically, that is my nest. And just so you know, I am nestled between my two boys' rooms right there, the bathroom right there, my bedroom right there, and the stairs going down. So when I call it my nest, it really is just a little tiny nest perched high, and uh, I think it's going to work out great. Thanks for taking a look. I appreciate it. Okay, I'm back. Now, before I proceed, I have to give you a little apology. Um, one thing you're going to learn about me is that, although in some ways I am very girly, I'm really just a tomboy in a middle-aged woman's body. I, I can't help it. I always have dirt under my fingernails. I'm not afraid of creepy crawly things except for spiders. Um, and even then, I'm not afraid of them. I just don't like them and... You have to kill it or else I won't go to sleep that night, but, or at least put it outside. But I'm not afraid of snakes or mice or any of that kind of stuff. And my hands are always a mess. I am forever like looking at all these women who do junk journal videos and they have beautiful hands with gorgeous rings on their fingers and that's not going to be me. I'm an artist. I have working artist hands. I have cuts on them, band-aids on them, ink on them, dirt on them. So I apologize in advance. This is the only time I'll probably address it because, you know, I'm not going to continually apologize for who I am. But just so you know, I, I am a little self-conscious about them only because there's so many people, be beautiful manicures on there. But anyway, I digress. Let me move forward. Okay. So I went to my first estate sale today. First of all, unless I'm missing the boat, there just really aren't a lot where I live. Um, I'm in Southern New Hampshire. A lot of the, the houses around here, there are some old houses, but they're more in the country and it's a drive. A lot of times I don't know about them. And I just don't think we have as many as some people do in other parts of the country. I'm constantly amazed at how many estate sales people go to. But maybe I'll find out that I'm wrong and they're all over the place and I just didn't know how to look for them. But one fell into my lap today. And when I saw that it was only a half an hour from me and it was this giant farm estate fit with buildings full of things, I thought I have to go. I have to go because I have to see if there are things that I haven't been able to find. And I'm so glad I did. Um, the first thing I'm going to show you is one of the things I have very bad luck about. I, I find people doing like haul videos and stuff. And some people tend to be like wallpaper. Other people tend to be textiles. I tend to really find books. Um, 
but I'm not really good at finding other things. Well, today I found other things. So I'm going to show you one of the most special things I got because it's big and I just want to make sure it's out of the way. I got this beautiful tablecloth. Now, I don't know much about linens. I'm not going to pretend I do. So if you have something to say about this, please put it in the comments. I'd love to know your thoughts on this. I think it's handmade. I think all of this is handmade. I think, I don't know. I mean, it looks like hand stitches in the back. I don't think it's machine, but I don't know. This is a giant tablecloth. And it's just all of these beautiful, you know, I'm going to call it lace, but I guess it's not really lace. It's probably crochet with all of this embroidery. And it's giant. It's like it's an oval or an oblong shape and probably for a table that fits six or eight, eight people. Look at this. Look, this is the center of the tablecloth. It's this big panel that has all of this beautiful embroidery. I am just in love with this. I don't know where if I'm going to use it. I don't know if I'll try to sell it, if I keep it for myself, but I just couldn't let it sit there. It was just so beautiful, or I thought it was so beautiful. So anyway, this is my big special find and piece today. I just, I just love it. It's so feminine and pretty and so not me because I'm just not a frilly person, but I just find it's gorgeous. So that was my first thing. Okay, the second thing is I got another tablecloth. And this tablecloth, I think I'll be able to cut up. It's um, embroidery and cut work. If you can see that. And, you know, all around the tablecloth is this pink, it's white and it's all pink and blue, very soft colors, cotton and, and um, embroidery and cut work. And it, again, it's another really big, it was, they had a giant dining room table and I think this was for their dining room table. I could see making maybe like um, pillowcases out of them. In the center, there's a lot more work so I don't know what I'm gonna use it for. If you have some ideas, please, please put it in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. So that's my second tablecloth. My third tablecloth is very simple, but it's basically, I bought it for the fabric. It is a toile. I think that's how you say it. I never say it right. But what I liked about it, it was completely farm. And I've seen them before. I, I haven't seen the farm one before. Especially there's a piece with turkeys on it that I just really liked. Let's see if I can find the turkeys. There's the turkeys. We have so many turkeys where we live. In fact, we have a road in town called Turkey Hill, and there's a reason it's called Turkey Hill, because there's just always turkeys on it. It is not uncommon in my town that you sit in your car and wait for 15 turkeys to cross the road. They're in our backyard all the time. They're everywhere. So I just, I really liked this turkey. But this toile, I don't even think this tablecloth was ever used. It's like in perfect condition. It's a heavy weight. And I just think this will be beautiful for fabrics. I mean, for um, journals. And then I got this one. And for some reason, I do know that this, I think, came from the Caribbean. They had a lot of... Um, even though this was a very New England farmhouse, they had a lot of, um, he was in the Navy and obviously had been in the Caribbean. So there were a lot of things that he had from his days in the Navy. And I want to say he probably brought this back with him. It's definitely hand done, if you can see in the back. And it's a sort of a lot lightweight cotton. Look at this. I've never seen this before. It's cut. The fabric is cut and frayed. So it looks like almost like a tassel inside. I, I just find that so unique. Again, maybe it's just me. Maybe this is a normal thing and I just haven't been exposed to it, but I just thought that was the coolest thing. Something about this reminded me of um, something I could use for a boho journal. I guess it might have been this. If you can kind of see, there's like a sequin, a shiny sequin, or even maybe 
a little glass square. I think it's a little glass square that's actually sewn in and it shimmers. And I thought this might be a really great piece for a boho journal. Um, see, here's another one with a little... So I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet, but I thought it was beautiful. I loved the colors. It reminded me of something that maybe I could make bohemian. Again, it's giant, so there's so much to work for and it work with, and it's all hand done. So this is another one. So those were my four tablecloths, and then I found this thing, which is so old, the whole back of it is um, falling apart. This velvet, this crushed velvet on the back. So I definitely know it's vintage. Look at this. I think this is so pretty. It's definitely like a, a brocade tapestry with like a vintage trim and then this crushed velvet on the back. I thought this would make a beautiful like um, journal. And again, I don't know that I'm even gonna keep all this. I might try to sell it. I'm not sure. What do you guys think of this? It's long. It's probably could get two or three journals out of it. It's really long. And I would say it would be a good size journal. If you used this on the cover and glued it down, it could be like a really large pocket journal or maybe a sketchbook, a travel journal. I don't know. I'll have to figure that out. Now the rest of the things are most, oh, well, I guess this would be the last thing. This would be a crocheted table runner. We've all seen them before. This one's actually quite damaged. Um, but I really loved all these little, all the little French knots. I thought that was nicely done. Um, and these little guys right here. But there's stains and holes, and I'll definitely have to cut this apart. But I, I loved looking at that. So now the rest are napkins. Whoops, sorry. And I got them mostly because I thought the colors were really pretty. This this one napkin, um, I only got one because that was the only one I could find, kind of gave me an Art Nouveau kind of feeling. And I do want to do a Art Deco um, journal. So I thought this fabric was really pretty, and maybe I will use it on that. So that's just a you know, a cotton napkin. And then there's definitely, you know, your normal ones that have appliques on them and stitching. That's the back, I th no, that's not the back. So there, I have all these different flowers and buds. And let me see if there's another one. I know I thought I saw a blue one somewhere around here, yeah. And I guess that's the variety on that kind. So those could be, I guess, in a journal or cut out and used a little piece here and there. And then I got a set of, I think, six of these. And they're a combination of cut work and embroidery. Probably on a machine. It looks too fast and perfect. Probably mass produced, but pretty, pretty and neutral. And gosh, look at all of these. I have tons and tons of this, the ones I just showed you. And then just a couple of these. I just thought that the fabric was pretty, a nice soft. And I have a thing with morning glories. So I'll share that story with you another time. But when I saw the morning glories, I definitely wanted to get those. So I got two of these. And then this one, how many do I have? Oh, only two. But I thought this was a really pretty color, this blue with the harvest. It's sort of like a, um, a linen or, yeah, it's kind of like a linen or like a grain sack material. And it's definitely harvest. And it's this like pretty, if you eat squash, it's sort of like a winter squash blue with, you know, all the pumpkins and stuff. I thought this would be a really pretty fall or um, Thanksgiving journal. And then I got a whole stack of doilies. Some are stained, some are not, 
Some are square, some are round, some need to be dyed, some need to not, you know, look at this, like I'm gonna have to wash that, see what I can do with that. I think I'm going to try avocado staining some of these. So I got a whole stack of these. We've all seen those before. So that was my fabric and Honestly, I was pretty thrilled with that because I generally don't have luck with fabric. Another thing I don't have luck with is playing cards. Some people say all they can do is find playing cards. I don't generally find them. This house had tons of them, but none of them were interesting. But I did buy these and I you know, these are the these are called B playing cards. I just found the outside to be quite pretty. They're quite worn on the side, but I thought the pattern was quite nice. So I got those. Now, I got books. Hold on, let me grab them. I'm back. Okay, book time. Now, one of the reasons I like to watch other people's hauls, especially with books, is because I see books on Amazon and thrift books and other online sites, but I don't know if they're really quality books that I'm gonna to wanna to use in my journals. I get great ideas from books by watching you all share the books you love. So hopefully you will get a sense of what these books are and if you wanna look for some yourself online, then if you see something that you like, then you'll already know that you like it before you order it because I've had a couple busts where I've ordered something and it's come in and it's been worthless. So with that said, let me take a sip of tea. Everybody seems to have great luck with Reader's Digest books. I do not. I have never found them. I have Reader's Digest Envy are they readers? Yes. So they're basically, if you don't know what they are, they are condensed books where they take four stories and they put it in one book. And I don't know if they edit them down or whether they're the full story. I don't know the answer to that. Um, I obviously don't have the answer to a lot of things because as you see in this video, I'm constantly saying, I don't know this and I've never seen that. And man, I'm pretty sheltered, I guess. But anyway, what people love them for is before a certain time period, these books had gorgeous covers and each, um, each volume had a different cover with a beautiful pattern and people get them just for their covers. I have been sort of waiting for the day that I find my own stash of Reader's Digest covers and today was the day. So let me show you. It's, it's not really important what the stories are or what's inside. You're only looking at the covers because, oh, and see, I didn't even open it. Look at this. <laughs> that would have been an adorable Ex Libris too. But anyway, here are the covers. I got this beautiful one with the blue and green, which I just really loved. This one that has like an ivy. Oh gosh, I loved this butterfly one, but as you can see, Oh, I thought somebody wrote on it, but you know what? That is the pattern. Oh, that, isn't that funny? It's like grass. It's really pretty, and it's got this pale pink. I wonder what the dates are. Hold on. And that is really pretty. So 1960, summer selection. Let me see on this one. 1959. So these must be in the 50s and 60s that they had the really pretty covers. So I got the butterfly cover, the ivy cover, this blue cover. This one isn't that pretty, but it is kind of cool. This pattern, it's kind of very mid-century. Let's see what date this one is. Fifty-seven. Oh, and there's some things in here. Oh, I love finding things in books. Oh, somebody's spelling test. Oh, look at this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cover her name. Look, it's her spelling test. That's so funny. And then this one that I thought was really pretty. 
It's got sort of like trees. So I ended up scoring five beautiful books, which I'm just thrilled at. And then I found two that the family dog must have gotten into. Um, and they are really pretty too. And it's sad. <laughs> Look at that sad cover. Isn't that sad? I mean, literally got chomped out. And this side is okay though, which is nice. So I can use that side. And I might cut this side down. And then look at that beautiful pattern. Chomp and chomp and chomp. I will cut this down and figure something out. I just thought it was pretty. And they gave me these two for free because obviously who wants the books that the dog chewed up? So, um, oh, 1954 on this one, 1959. I guess the year's right on the end. <laughs> so all of mine are in like uh, late 50s, early 60s. So maybe if you're searching on eBay, you could search 1950s or 60s um, Reader's Digest Condensed Books. Okay, the next book is not new. I mean, it's not old, but it caught my eye. I've never seen it before. And definitely a book that I might search on um, thrift books or somewhere, somewhere on because it's, it's really full of wonderful artwork. So it's done by Applewood Books. It's a little tiny book. And it's the floral birthday book. And inside, it's flowers and their emblems. And inside this book, let's see when it was. There's a date on it. Hmm. might be hard to find. It looks like it might be a small run, privately owned company that did it. But inside, it's got this very vintage look. Look at these, the font. And it's all um, dates with a beautiful Im botanical image and uh, a poem. Really lovely. Look at that. And they're blank on this side, so you, I guess you would write people's birthdays so you wouldn't lose their, their you know, write who was born then. Um, but this would be wonderful to cut out and put a special date of yours in a journal. But the pictures are beautiful really pretty tons of them small perfect for tags and journals i mean the whole thing is just poems and botanical images one for every day of the year really lovely so i would recommend this book the paper's flat so no shine to it and really pretty colors um like i said that font is very vintage and you know it's you have all these dates so really cute little book Definitely recommend that one. And I got these two bird books. I think we all know this one, just full of birds. And that's the um, Peterson Field Guide. Everybody kind of knows this one. This one here, um, kind of a new book, but each page had a full-size bird. So I thought, you know, this might be nice for a cover or for book pages. So this was the kitchen table bird book. And I'm gonna pause for a second here. Okay, I'm back. I was interrupted by my husband coming home from work. So let me take a cup of a little sip of tea. I only found two of these at the sale. They're the Natural Science, the Golden Book Encyclopedia of National Science. If you see any of these online, they're really beautiful inside. They have a gorgeous inside cover. The paper is like that almost creamy, um, heavy paper, very matte. And the illustrations are so saturated. I really love how saturated um, the colors are. Something, I think, to do with the the way that the paper is and the inks from back then they just they were just really cool from that time period um, look at look at that oops look how nice and the colors are they're just I really love 
these gold these golden book illustrations. So if you ever have a chance to get these, these were um, back in the 60s. I remember having some of these. They would send one, probably like this one, in the mail to you. And then the offer was 49 cents and you would get this one. If you didn't want it, you sent it back. If you kept it, you sent in the 49 cents which can you believe people sent in 49 cents on a check back then? Crazy. And you didn't do it by credit card. Nobody did anything by credit card. And then every month you would get another one or you'd get maybe two and it'd be 99 cents each. Just unbelievable. So why they only have two, I don't know, but they only had two. And then I got um, a couple of these encyclopedias, which I have to go back to Nick the Booksmith's lap book. I think the cover of hers was similar to this. It might have been the same series. Um, what I liked about them, I don't usually get encyclopedias. I have so many. I believe this is a 1930s encyclopedia. The font is really cool. It's it's sort of that old font, old fashioned font. The papers are yellowed perfectly. The paper is so smooth, and um, the line art in it is really exceptional. A little bit better than what I usually see in encyclopedias. I think this one has more. Let's see if I can find some so it's not showing that I'm a complete liar. No, oh, I'm not going to be able to find it. There's, I, I think, the one with the bees. It must be this. There's bees and different um, insects, and it's really beautiful. I guess you'll have to take my word on it. Okay, and then... They gave me some damaged books for free. These are all falling apart. I am thrilled to have them because I will take the covers and figure something out. This one cracked me up, The Loyal Lover. Um, they had to repair it with their own masking tape or something and then they wrote on it. Um, and then they glued the jacket inside, which I think is kind of cool. And then I got a couple other damaged books. This Mickey Mouse book that they gave me because it was falling apart, but I will take some stuff out of there. And then I wish I knew more about this. This is just barely the insides of a book. It's so fragile, but it is so delicate. And like, it's beautiful. The pictures, the line drawings are beautiful. So I think, see, you can see it falling apart. I think what I'm going to do is maybe do some scans from it. Um, because it really is nice. And then I saw somebody else's haul. See, look at this. And they had mentioned this book. Maybe this book. And I, I probably wouldn't have given it a second look except for somebody else had mentioned it. It's from the 60s or 70s. It's the Marshall Cavendish Illustrated Encyclopedia of Gardening. It's in two volumes. And it's, you know, it's very typical 70s. It's, it's the, you know, four color photographs. But because they're on like a dull paper, and just the way that they're um, photographed, it's sort of like a Instagram filter, you know, that kind of vintagey look. They would be really nice for backgrounds. But they also have these really nice, I'm gonna try to get up close, line drawings that are in beautiful color. And those are almost on every page too. So between the line drawings and some of the um, art, I will definitely get my money's worth. I mean, I paid a dollar for them. So really there's, if I fussy cut in here, I am totally gonna get my, my money's worth. So I have those and I got a bunch of random, a big bag of paper and envelopes. Um, and in that, in that big bag of paper and envelopes, I found some vintage ledger paper, which I love. Um, I found some stationery, which I don't want to reveal the name too much. I got a manual for a gremlin, which I think is pretty funny. And then I got all these very interesting 
envelopes that are very fanciful and fairy tale-ish. So those will go in a fairy journal that I'm working on. And last but not least, a 1930s copy of The House of Green Gables by Hawthorne. And it was part of a high school. And actually, it's really funny because um, I've, I've seen this house. I've been to this house. And, oh, 1922. So this was in the school system. And then, I don't know if they just threw it away or whatever, but uh, it's, it's a neat old copy of that. And then this book was damaged, and they gave it to me. And once I got it home, let me see. It's got some interesting things in it. It's called the Big Grid Blighton Book, if I'm looking at that correctly. It's got some beautiful spreads. Look at this. Isn't that nice? Let's see, there's a bird one, too. Well, there's some really pretty colored pictures in here. Um, great for fussy cutting. There was a bird one I saw that was really pretty as well. There it is. Isn't that nice? But there was a lot of damage to this book. It was soaked in water in places, like there's a lot of water damage on it, and um, so it won't be able to be kept. And the last two are how to read handwriting um, based on the letters, and it has a bunch of notes and letters from different people in their handwriting, which I thought was really cool. And I'm not usually a religious book person, but this one is stuffed with personal ephemera. And I just, I can't wait to go through it and figure out what all these little notes and things are. I think there's some poems in here, and, and um, I just thought it was an interesting book. So that is my haul. I would love to hear what you guys have to say about it since it's my first um, estate sale and if there's anything that you can share with me about anything that I brought home I would appreciate that so the last thing will be my next tutorial okay we're in the home stretch now uh, the last thing that we're going to talk about today if you're still with me in this video well done you here we go um, next tutorial that I have planned is making the journal charms. It's a favorite of mine. See? Ink, ink. Ridiculous. Um, I love these little charms. Very easy to make. If you have the right materials, you don't have to go out and buy the, ma the materials ahead of time, but I probably will not get to do this for a week or so. I I'm not sure when I'll be able to do it. Next week's a very busy week, and my son has prom, and there's a few things going on, and it's Mother's Day week and coming up. So I will try to get this done next week, but if not, certainly the week after. So I just want to give you a list of materials you need ahead of time. And it's not going to be a lot. This might look like a lot, but it really isn't. It's going to be a fairly inexpensive project for you to do. But I want to give you um, some time. So you're really only going to need two bricks of clay. Three if you want to get extra fancy. And that's really your call. We are making little journals. So I like it to look as if they were leather. Okay? So because of that, I tend to pick browns. My favorite two, they're Sculpey. This one is Suede Brown. This is an old package. Um, you can see it's kind of dark. It's almost, it's close to black, but it definitely is brown. That's probably, is that the one I used for this? No. I think I used this. Um, this is called Chocolate. We can all remember that one now, can't we? So suede brown or chocolate are two good choices. Sculpey also has another line called souffle. Don't get confused. Souffle is nothing special. It's just um, their premium colors. They give you a little less. They're going to charge you more, but it's still, you know, going to be around $3 or less. 
and they just have like designer colors. This particular one is latte. Ooh, 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 doesn't that sound fancy compared to chocolate? So this is latte and this is more of like a tan. I think this is kind of like what I used for this one. So that's gonna be your cover of your book. So pick one color that you want for your book. You can either you do black too, but it needs to be dark, like a dark brown. I would definitely not even go for this for your first one, just um, unless you want to, but really uh, dark, dark colors, dark brown. And again, I've mentioned before, the Craft Smart is the Michaels brand. You can definitely use that and they have a dark brown. They probably have two browns that you could choose in this one. So uh, you, you want to get your cover color and then the pages. Your pages are going to be white. Even if you want it to be a little aged, it needs to be white. So, cause they really, they don't really have, they might have an ecru color, but they don't really have an aged page color. You know, they, there's no tea stained polymer clay. So just go for white. So you're getting two bricks of clay, brown and white. And if you want to get extra fancy, because that's just how you roll, you can get a third color, and that third color might be to add a little embellishment, like this one pink. I actually had more than three here, but you know, if you wanted to add a color that way, or in this case, I found a metallic. They have gold, silver, and copper. You could find like um, a copper maybe, and that would give you an additional color. You could do that if you wanted to, but really two is all you needed to start. So we're talking about less than five dollars for this project if you have some of the things already um, if you don't you need these things anyway probably so just go for it so two bricks of clay you're going to need um, a brass jump ring or a silver one but i go for brass for this particular project um, and what am i saying jump ring that's not a jump ring that's an eye pin if you can tell to make it look a little real, I have like a little um, buckle here and I make that out of a brass jump ring. So you probably have one in your stash and it's not even necessary for this. I don't think I have one on here. On here I have a silver bead. So don't go out and buy jump rings just for this project. Don't, it's not worth it. But if you have a brass jump ring or even a silver one, go for it, we need it there. And then this is where you get the eye pin and the eye pin is just to hold it in, you know, obviously right there. And an em metal embellishments, if you have them, don't go out and buy stuff for this. You know, look around your house, look in your jewelry box. I, I know you have an earring that doesn't match another earring or a necklace that's broken that has a clasp or a jump ring or a doodad on it. I had a little thing of um, gears, which make, you know, to put on this. This one is just a silver bead. Um, look around, grab a bunch and put them in a little dish. And when we work together, maybe you'll, you'll um, find something that you really like. So that is all the things you absolutely need. For tools, you're going to need something to rolling, a rolling pin. I don't recommend wood. Wood and polymer clay aren't really your friend because the color, especially a dark, will die, will get in your, your wood, you will not be able to get it out. You need something that um, you can clean off. So this is what I put in my art class. It's just a cut piece of PVC piping. Really expensive, don't you think? But um, also just an acrylic roller, which you can buy in the polymer clay section or you can buy it in the paper craft section. Um, actually, in the cake decorating section, in the fondants also have them, but they're they're used in so many different things that you can you can get as long as it's a hard surface that can be cleaned. It could also be stone, marble, granite, anything. As long as you can roll it out. And I like these tiles to bake on and to work on. They're like. 50 cents at the home at Home Depot, Lowe's, or any of your stores. If you have um, a restore, you know, like a, a thrift shop, they sometimes will sell boxes of them. A tile is just really important. And then to get the look that we're looking at, the, the vintagey look and the make it look like leather, we're going to need something metallic. 
I prefer the gilding wax. Um, this is DecoArt Metallic Luster. Uh, I use the Gold Rush, but it can be any gold or coppery um, wax. That would be fine. Or if you want to go the cheap route, go to the dollar store, get some cheap makeup. Um, this particular palette probably wouldn't recommend because it's all blues and whites. I would go for something that had copper and gold in it, but I just wanted to show you something this cheap would work. So this is really all you need for our project, and I will post that video once I have it done. Like I said, I have a lot going on this month, but I will do it this month. It will be a May tutorial, I promise. I'm just not sure when. So that's everything. Thank you, thank you for joining me today. Um, my tea is gone and I'm a little caffeinated up and I'm gonna have a great weekend. I hope you have a great weekend. Thanks for having tea with me and thanks, with ha for, thanks for hanging with me. If this video or parts of this video were helpful to you, please give me a thumbs up and I'd love for you to subscribe. If you have any comments, suggestions, ideas, or anything you wanna share about my haul, about this particular project coming up, about Darlene, or about my nest, I'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much, and I'll talk to you soon. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.